a bit late, uh, so I'll try to do the presentation a bit faster. Um, my name is Carlo Ratti. I head uh, the MIT Sensible City Lab. It's a new research uh, project at MIT, new research lab. Uh, we started like five years ago. We're now 25 people uh, looking at how cities are evolving and the future of uh, cities. Uh, I'm not a journalist, but I'll, so I'll show you some of the um, um, things we are doing in the lab. And at the end, I will actually try to sort of generalize a little bit and see how some of this is relevant to uh, a lot of the things that are being discussed at the conference here. Uh, so let me start with this image. Now, this is 1990. Remember, 1993 is when the first browser emerged. Uh, it was a mosaic. 1995 is when Nicolas Negroponte actually wrote the book, Being Digital. So it looks like a long, long time ago. And people at the time were fascinated with the idea of a completely virtual world. So if you look at this, uh, you know, something, the physical will not exist anymore. Everything will be virtual. And uh, some people, even like Gilder, 1995, thought that cities in our physical space would disappear. So Gilder said, because of the internet and the virtual, uh, cities will disappear, then they are leftover baggage from the industrial time. You know, it's a tough job to be a futurologist, especially if people look back at what you say like 15 years ago. Uh, and we all know the story now. We know the story that actually cities and, uh, have been booming in the past 15 years. That's an image from Tianjin uh, from this summer at the World Economic Forum. Uh, China itself is planning to build more cities than all of humanity ever built. And uh, we also know that since a few months, actually half of humanity, over half of humanity for the first time in history is living in cities. So what really happened is that the digital, that you see the layer on the top, didn't kill the physical space. But the digital layer in the physical space are recombining <coughs> and creating new possibilities. Uh, so it's. Um, all these like bits and atoms coming together and all the interfaces that connect them. And you're onto the digital side, onto these layers, there's also a lot of real-time information, there's a lot of news, there's a lot of uh, other type of uh, layered information onto our cities and physical space. Uh, what we do in the group then is look at uh, this, try to explore this new condition and uh, explore urban future in partnership with uh, cities, um, our group at MIT and companies. So just to give an example, I'll show you one of the projects we did a couple of years ago. This was at the Venice Biennale in Venice. A uh, big exhibition about uh, architecture every two years. And two years ago, it was about cities. Uh, the head was uh, Ricky Burdett from the London School of Economics. And what we did here was try to show what would happen in a system, in a city, with a constant flow of real-time information. There's a big um, idea that people in computer science have been developing over the past few years. It's uh, what is called the Internet of Things, an internet that will connect all the objects when everything would be trackable and controllable and addressable. Now, the question here is uh, uh, how much of that can we build today in an existing city? And, uh, you know, we all have cell phones these days. And if you have a cell phone, your cell phone operator knows where you are uh, because you are connected to a tower, and that tower has a certain position in the city, so your cell phone operator knows where you are. We know that. And now, this information has been used for not very nice purposes in the past, but if you actually anonymize it and aggregate it, you could use it to see the city and describe the city in a new way. So what we said here was, well, you know, we got all this information, for instance, from the cell phone network, from taxis, from buses, all of this is information that is captured by other people. What if we just collect it, anonymized, and then try to visualize it and see how this can help us understand the city in a new way? So we put together a, a system that was capturing uh, the data in real time in four servers, sending it to MIT, analyzing it, and sending it back to the Venice Biennale um, to, to show this at the exhibition. Uh, and just to, to show an example, let me show you here, you know, we were very lucky 2006 is when Italy won the, the, the World Cup, the Soccer World Cup. Uh, and that was that summer in July, while the exhibition, just before the exhibition started. 
And uh, so I'll show you now, for instance, something, what happened in the city of Rome during the night of the finals of the World Cup. And I apologize from the beginning if there's any Frenchman here. You know, remember that night was Fr <laughs> France and Italy and Zidane and, uh, you know, and Italy won, so. Um, this was the, the exhibition space we had. So with all these different type of uh, real-time projections in the pavilion. And uh, here is what happened. Look at uh, what, how people behaved at night all anonymous and aggregated information here from the cell phone network, uh, the night of the finals. That's a normal day before the match. You know, this is uh, the most basic type of information is uh, the megabytes of calls. Why did it stop? Sorry. Uh, the megabytes of calls in different parts of the city. And you see here it's the morning, afternoon, evening, before the match. So it's a normal day in Rome. It's July 2000, 2006. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> then look at this, match begins, silence, no information anymore. France scores, Italy scores, half time, you know, people go to the bathroom for a moment, make a quick call. <laughs> End of normal time, first overtime, second overtime, Zidane, red card, Italy wins. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, that night people went to, celeb went to celebrate in this part of town. And then uh, the, um, the following day, they actually went here. The prime minister, Prodi, um, s welcomed the winning team. And then everybody went, moved to this part of town uh, to have a big party in the gardens. <laughs> and you see the pizza. Uh, so, you know, the, the, Oops, sorry, wait. This is, uh, uh, this was to just, you know, the most basic type of information, but if you apply a bit of artificial intelligence, for instance, you can do more sophisticated things. So what you see here is actually a system where you put together public transportation and the density of people. That is what is shown with the red color. Uh, so if you, the idea is if you combine it, you can actually create a more intelligent city where you optimize the movement and the flows. So sometimes you have a lot of buses where nobody's there, sometimes. So how can we think about a system, about a future where it's not the people going to follow the bus, but it's more the buses going to follow the people. So here you see, you see all the buses are, and the taxis are the yellow dots, and the way they move in the city is proportional to the, t the length of the tail they have. Um, and then, this was 2006, um, people liked it, the mayor was very happy, um, there was a lot of discussion about the project, so 2007 we said, well, why don't we create a platform for actually sharing all this here information in the city of Rome? The problem before was we <coughs> were showing the city of Rome, but showing it in Venice. So it didn't really create a feedback loop. But what if you take all of this and you actually show it in the city where it is captured and people will react to it? So that year, 2007, we um, started collecting all of this, create a platform for the sharing in real time of this information. We added also, if you see the sponsors here, we had um, Pagine Gialle is the yellow page operator in Italy, the largest one, uh, Telecom, the cell phone company, but the technical partners, we had Repubblica, one of the main newspapers in the country, giving us real time feeds from uh, what was happening in the city. And ATAC, the company that does, um, um, the, company that does uh, the buses and public transportation and the trains. So the idea is, what if we can do this platform, get all this real-time information and share it with the citizens? Then we have a city that behaves like a sort of real-time feedback system, real-time con control loop. Um, and uh, I will no, not go in details into, into this. Uh, and because it's, we are a bit late, I'm planning to skip uh, a few. Okay, thank you. We're all time. So you don't, wa you don't want anybody to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lunch has been canceled. I'm learning, so no. <laughs> um, I, I'll, still skip a, I'll still skip one project here. Um, or at least I will go a bit faster. <laughs> 